Greetings and welcome to the Sunlam ESG Barometer Series, where we will be digging deeper into the insights derived from the 2023 installment of the Sunlam ESG Barometer. My name is Andy Lekumalo and welcome to Episode 5. Now, environmental, social and governance imperatives have become fundamental to how businesses make investment decisions. The Sunlam ESG Barometer, in partnership with the Business Day, is the first to assess how JC listed companies are actively improving social and environmental outcomes in society through their various activities. However, some people have been calling for companies to differentiate between ESG integration, impact, and ESG rankings. Today, at the Business Day TV studios, I'm joined by two experts to discuss this very theme. What is the prioritization between ESG integration, impact, or ESG ratings? First up, I'm joined by Deboko Makabane. She's the head of ESG and impact at Salam Investments. And of course, I'm also joined by the Chief Sustainability Officer at Sanlam, Mr. Abel Sakao. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here in studio. Thank you for bringing color into this uh, conversation. Deboko, let me start with you as the brightest person. Why is it important for us to make this distinction? Um, ESG integration on the one hand, impact on the other, and ESG rankings. Thank you, Andile. Um, I think it's important because they're all different concepts and we use them differently. Uh, let me use examples to distinguish between right. all the concepts. So ESG integration is what, uh, as an investor, when you look at a company, the risks that you consider that you want to take into account when you value in that company that may happen because of environmental, social, or governance issues. For instance, if you are valuing a company in retail and you know that with load shedding, they spend a lot on, on diesel uh, to keep their retail outlets uh, alight, so you would then factor in the diesel cost in your valuation, right. which is an impact because of environmental energy costs. And maybe with an S would be a, comp a healthcare company. We know in South Africa, we've had so many nurses who leave to the UK. Yeah. So that's a human capital cost. So you would factor in how much a health, a healthcare company will spend on training nurses, licensing them, and also retention. That's a high cost, so you take that into account. So that's integration. It's just taking the ESG risks into your valuation uh, considerations, and then you get a valuation for a company. Impact, on the other hand, it's a measurable outcome. So say you've considered a risk, a company that its operation depends on water, and in South Africa, we know with water shortages. So it's one thing to consider what happens when they need water and they don't have it. But impact will be to move beyond risk and say, we're going to build a water recycling facility right. so that we can use that. So you've moved beyond just risk mitigation to creating an immeasurable outcome, and that's impact. So that's companies moving beyond ESG and into creating impact. Right. And then scores, on the other hand, are just a snapshot that an investor can go and log on to your MSCI and see how is a service provider rating that company. You would get a score, probably an AA or a B, but you never really have insights into how they're scoring it, what are they weighing, are they putting more emphasis on the S or an E? So you can just get it as a gauge, uh, and it's also easy to compare. Uh, but that's as far as you can take it. Then you still need to do analysis and to understand how does that risk look for a specific company and how do they uh, probably see it as an opportunity for impact. Okay, then Abel, let me come to you then. So rankings, are they important and potentially h how could they be misleading? Yeah, uh, thanks Andy. Rankings are important uh, because they give that snapshot to see how companies are uh, incorporating ESG elements and disclosing. And I think if you look at the history of ranking, they started by emphasizing disclosure. Right. And uh, they are, we are now at a phase where now ranking are uh, used by you know, investors to check if uh, organizations are disclosing, but at the same time reflecting what they are disclosing in terms of actual performance right and uh, and and I think it's important also to note that you know with ranking you have to be careful because depending on your context what is important for us in South Africa might not necessarily be what yes. is important for a company that's sitting in Europe 
So when we do our ESG integration and we do our ESG performance, you know, the S becomes critical. And the ranking might be underweighting the S element over the environmental. And within the environmental, they focus more on the emissions and the mitigation part. So when you look at rank, you have to understand how do they weigh. Uh, there are different elements of ESG. Which one of those ranking uh, elements is in, uh, heavily weighted? And you can use one ranking uh, in this. You, you know, you've got S&P Global, you've got MSCI, you've got uh, ISS. So there's so many of them. Yeah. So you have to look at multiple uh, 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 ranking to be able to get a good indication of how company perform around issues of ESG. But you raise a good point around context and, and the fact that these companies are, are in different parts of the world. And we all know that in the West, environmental issues seem to be a lot more topical and, yeah. and kind of hit the headlines. In the rest of the continent, we have got other uh, priorities. Not to say environment isn't important, yeah. but our burning issues are slightly different. Mm -hmm. So how does, uh, and let me come to you, Deboko, how does looking at from an integration perspective versus rankings help you look at a company and assess and go, let me t take into consideration the context because these are global rankings mm. which are not necessarily going to take advantage or rather take into consideration mm. every single uh, nit bit of information mm. about a country that's potentially in a different part of the world compared to another country that's in another part of the world. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So they're very contextual, uh, geography-wise, but also they have to be uh, contextual in uh, the sector you're working in. Right. So the risks faced by a mining company are different from a healthcare, a retail, and so forth. So um, I think integration, it also helps as an investor, you can check, does a company, is it aware of its, uh, the risks it faces, the interplay of its product or service with environmental, social, and governance? So a company that's in packaging, uh, it will be very important for it to take into account uh, the natural capital, the raw material of what it uses. You know, how is it using recycling, uh, paper, and all that? So I would put that risk higher for it and how it's treating that over perhaps a risk on cyber security, where in the bank, uh, cyber automation is more important. So not only are you taking your sector specific, it's also where are you operating and what are you prone to. And in South Africa, we also know uh, unemployment and inequality. So as you look at your product as well, how is it addressing that? So as Sunlam, we are an insurer. You know, is a product affordable by the majority of South African and all of that? So it gives you comfort when you're valuing a company. One, if the disclosures show that a company understands its risks yeah. and its place, yeah. and they disclose relevant things, uh, you can see that it's part of the strategy. But if they just compliance, you can see the disconnect because yes. between what you do and the ESG issues you see. Yeah. Now, Abel, the other issue about rankings and potentially integration is the fact that um, you know the ESG barometer is unique in many ways because it harps on this theory of additionality. And I would imagine a ranking is on the basis of past performance. You know, it's kind of like an audit. Um, I've done some things. On the basis of the things I've done, where do I sit in life? Mm. Now, many companies are, just by virtue of the business that they are in, are likely to be emitters of carbon, uh, carbon emissions and are they likely to have come from certain practices that at a certain point in the world they were not so frowned upon mm -hmm. and now they are. How do we ensure that when we're analyzing companies we almost don't punish those who are what they are, we instead look at their plans to, 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 to help themselves become better uh, players in society or to potentially pivot into cleaner fuels and more responsible uh, kind of performance with their customers or their employees. So does do any of these things take into consideration the future? Yeah, a and I think the point you are raising is very important. That's why it's important to have an engagement strategy because all the data that's around there, you know, some of the data, you know, is collected by bots by following company news and, and it then forms an opinion. And if you only focus on, you're gonna miss almost 80% of what's critical. Mm. So an engagement strategy where you engage with the company to understand their current challenges and how they are responding to those challenges. It's important because then it gives you a much broader understanding of an organization. But also what then it does, 
it says we are not here to judge, but we are here to partner with you so that we can walk the journey with you. And I think it's a, it's a different m a mindset and approach that we take from a Sunlam perspective to say, you know, we understand our context in South Africa. We operate in 31 countries in Africa. The challenges are fast. Yeah. We can then not only use one measure to take strategic decisions that will have ramification for the future. You have to engage, you have to understand the context, you also have to understand the, you know, the, the surrounding of that organization, to say where do they operate, you know, what are the communities, to make sure that you are able to make that informed decision and you support them from partnership perspective and you are able to work with them uh, the journey. Because Sanlam we sell promise to the future. Yeah. We cannot give that promise to the future if we approach it from where we you know, we penalize companies. Mm -hmm. We must partner with them. Let me come back uh, to you, uh, Devoho. You know, we, we did also touch on impact. Mm -hmm. And impact is um, all about tangible outcomes, mm -hmm. things that I can see, that I can touch, mm -hmm. um, that, are, that have been as a result of somebody doing something. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm interested that when you assess companies, mm -hmm. how do you ensure that ESG integration from a risk perspective versus looking for positive impact outcomes. Do those two relate in your assessment? Yeah, they do. Um, I think the easier one usually is the risk because it's financially material. Mm. So it's easy for an investor to say, of course, this is going to hit the bottom line. But there's the other part, which is impact. And more, uh, we found now there's this concept of double materiality, where yeah. it's not just the financial materiality, it's your impact on the environment and society. Mm. Um, and at times you can't quantify that, uh, but now more and more we're beginning to. Uh, but now it's like, even if it doesn't hit your bottom line, it's still an impact to society. So take that into account. How are you gonna change things? So if we go back to maybe that healthcare uh, um, a risk of d uh, nurses leaving and doctors. So as a healthcare company, uh, you have an opportunity, as much as there's a risk, the opportunity there is to address the unemployment in South Africa uh, and inequality. So you could uh, be through sponsorships, through bursaries, start a school where it feeds into your business, so it mitigates a risk, but also it has a broader implication right. on society. So if companies start looking, fine, this is a risk, but how can I then invest in the opportunity to mitigate my risk, but uh, contribute to broader society, environmentally and socially as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. Abel, I'm so glad we're having this conversation today because little birdie tells me you've just finished another reporting cycle at Sunlam. So I must ask, how does Sunlam then approach all of these various measures when you are putting together your sustainability report and telling the market all the things that you are doing uh, as an investment business, so there's got to be impact investing in there as just, you know, the largest non-banking financial services player on the continent. So people are watching you to almost be a trendsetter. How do you approach it? Yeah, uh, on a daily basis, we try to be innovative in terms of how we disclose information. And this year in particular, we want to focus on showing the impact we create and not by just narrating it, but also by providing actual stats. You know, to say, you know, if we invest in company A, this is the impact we've created, not only from job creation, but from avoidance of emissions, but from creating resilience in terms of water infrastructure and stuff like that. So it's important that we start telling that narrative. But also when we do tell that narrative in our uh, in, uh, integrated report and sustainability report, we must also be conscious that, you know, behind those numbers, they are actual people. Absolutely. So we should not use then the people that we we support and we invest in those businesses to feel like we are now using them as part of our marketing. So we are always conscious to balance the two where, you know, when we disclose, we show impact, but it should not come out as if we are using our beneficiaries gotcha. as a marketing gotcha. tool. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Abel, let me thank you for your time. Devoho, let me do the same. Appreciate you guys for joining us today. Okay, we've come to the end of uh, episode five of the Salam ESG Barometer series. And in fact, we've also come uh, close to, to the end of the entire series because the next one is episode six and the final. And at the episode six, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic, a little emotive, Africa versus the worst. The West is or Europe, it is uh, Americas, and the debate is what does ESG mean to the West versus Africa? Until then, goodbye.